Great, cool. Um, I think it's working now. And let me go ahead and share screen here in our server. And thank you so much again for you guys um, for waiting since it's been a while since I've had the opportunity to teach here. Should be this one. Okay. I'll play some music as well as usual. So if you need to lower the volume, just go ahead and um, click the stream video and then just right click it and then you'll see this little bar where um, you will be looking at the link. Um, I mean, not the link. You right click the screen, then there's a little bar there that you can move left and right. And that's how you can adjust the audio of the um, of the video just so it doesn't start for you. Um, so it's that it's not too long. All right, so thanks for coming to class today. So for today's lesson, we will be looking at formal writing versus, um, let's see, formal writing versus perhaps um, colloquial or like informal writing. So if you want to type questions regarding writing, how to introduce yourself or how to do things, um, or how to do, write things in a certain way, you can go ahead and type in the Classroom A chat and I will be able to read it there and rewrite it with you. So as I promised, you guys decided that you wanted me to do how to write an email. So we will focus on that today. So lesson objective, you will learn some helpful tips about emailing. You'll get a chance to practice writing an English email on paper before you send one. So you'll also learn how to format an English email correctly. So the word email is short for electronic mail. About 90% of email is spam or promotional mail. The sign at, oh, the at sign is called the at symbol. Okay, for warm up, um, choose one of the following three topics. Write for five minutes on the lines below, on the next page, in your notebook, on the back of your paper, or on your electronic device or computer. Do not correct your, um, do not correct your writing, just write. So, Number one, what reasons do people have for email? How important is spelling, punctuation, and formatting when it comes to email? What are differences between an informal email and formal email? So for you guys in this activity, just choose one to respond to. So either choose one, two, or three for just this one warm-up exercise. If it works here. So here, just choose one. And then when you are done, go ahead and write the number. Like for example, um, let's say I, I choose number one. What reasons do people have for emailing? Just write number one and then just write your response. That's all I need to see. So Firestorm, I should choose one number. Um, yes, one, two, or three. You don't have to do all of them. That's just a lot of things to ask from you at this moment. Okay, so choose. So if you chose number three, go ahead and write a response to what are some differences between an informal email and a formal email. Okay, so to me, chose number two. It's all good. So thanks for trying, Firestrom. Uh, sorry, I come late, so do not fully understand what I need to do. 
So um, we are practicing on e- writing an email. And if we have time, we can talk about um, how to write a business email later because I, ha- I do have some samples I can share. So what I'm asking is choose one of the three topics below. Just write a response to one, two, or three. Don't write for all of them. Just one. All right. I guess I'm going to choose one because nobody did. (laughs) That's fine. Let me go ahead and read what me wrote. So me wrote, it'll be easier for people to look and read the email if you spell words correctly, use punctuations correctly, and format. So how important is spelling country when it comes to email? Yes, so I agree with you, me. Um, it will be easier for people to look and reread emails if all of the functions there, the grammar, the spelling, and the punctuations, and the format is nice. So in addition that I would add as well is that if you are writing an, a formal um, letter or email, it looks professional. So it's very straight to the point. Um, you have your topics addressed in different paragraphs-ish, and then that's all. So good answer. Oops, sorry about that. That's okay. I was trying to open like the other messages and then instead it teleported me to the next chat. Or voice call, sorry. Mm. So happy Smurf answered the first question. What reasons do people have for emailing? Electronic way of communicating better than what was available at the time. Physical letters, fax, or SMS. Not that awesome today. However, however, still the number one way of official official communication methods and organization or business. Yes. So you were very um, specific as to what functions emails are. Um, yes, I agree with you that the email is the closest to professional um professionalism especially since it is one of the fastest uh methods to submit professional letters rather than the olden days where you would send letters or go to the work site itself and then print out your paper and just give it to them so this is so that's one of the major advantages of using emailing 
Yeah. And then also, yeah, emails are so um, flexible, so you can access it in anything like my tablet, which is the one I'm using right now. Um, I can, you can use it on your phone, on your laptop, etc. Uh, what do you mean? Maybe an echo coming from uh, me. An echo. I think so. It's here, Firestorm. Your voice sounds different today, or I'm crazy. Um, I guess you could say it's just my voice sounds tired because I was napping this whole um uh, for most of the day. I had work this morning at nine to ten. Then I then I napped until one thirty, and then I prepared everything today. And after that, I have another work at 3.30 later today. So it's like, it's been a very long day for me. Mondays are crazy. So thank you for everyone who submitted. Um, Firestrom, will you be submitting uh, number three? I just want to make sure that you I just want to make sure that you might be posting a response take your time um, and then post if possible for um, number three when you can but we will be moving on right now okay so warm-up continue this is just bad so if you can Match these words to their correct definitions. These are just vocabulary words. I'm just checking to see if you guys recognize um, what these mean when you're writing your emails. So number one, recipient. We'll do it all together. So what is number one? Who's a recipient? So Firestrom, you chose a number, right, for the previous exercise. You were supposed to submit your response, just like Happy and me already did. But I'm saying to take your time because I know it takes some time to write. As for everyone else, we're moving on with the next activity, which is identifying these vocabulary words. So does anyone know what number one is? What letter is it? Recipient. Yes, letter A. So me, you got, so you said it correctly. The person who receives the item or letter, they are called the recipient. So that's correct. Okay. So I noticed that Firestrom has um, is not at level right now with the lesson I'm preparing or sharing with you guys, and that's okay. So you're still welcome to stick stick around and listen, Firestorm, but. Um, yeah, so it might be difficult for you to respond to some of the exercises, so that's okay. Moving on to number two, who is the postmaster? Does anyone know what letter number two is? I see. Hmm. So no one knows what the uh, letter number two is. So the answer for number two is D. Yes, me got it too. So D, the person in charge of delivering the meal. We don't, well, technically in California, or I don't know if it's the same for all states, I should say, we don't say postmaster, we say mailman. So this is the person in charge of delivering the mail. It's he's called, or he or she's called the mailman, mailwoman. 
So we don't really use the word postmaster, which is interesting. All right, number three, what is salutation? This is a very, very fancy word. So yes, me got it correct. Letter B is for number three. What is number four? What is the body? So we've got A already, we have D, and we have B. Oops, I hate it when this happens. I really dislike when it glitches out like that. So number four, body is what? C? Mm -hmm. Yes, so C is letter four. So you, you totally got it, me. What's the sign off for number five? E. E, so five. To write at the end of the letter. Mm-hmm, that's correct for E. What's number six? A few spaces before the new paragraph. Excellent. Good job, Firestorm. Okay, number seven. D, the person in charge of delivering the mail? Nope, that's postmaster. No. That's number two. Oh. Yep, number, um, so what me said, G for letter seven. Oh, sorry, G for number seven. A preset name or te mm. and text graphics at the end of an email. Okay. Number eight, what is filter? To sort, yeah. To sort, yes, letter I. What's red flag? H, a clue that something is wrong. Mm hmm. A clue that something is and wrong. And spam is the last one. Yep, J. I do not know why the screen just keeps getting closer and closer. There you go. That should be everything. And let me double check with the answer key just to make sure we are on the right note. Oops. We are looking at... Just to make sure everything's all good. Because you, you you never know if you're wrong for anything. Okay, so like we said earlier, vocabulary preview. 1 is A, 2 is D, 3 is B, 4 is C, 5 is E, 6 is F, 7 is G, 8 is I, 9 is H, and 10 is J. So perfect score. Excellent job. So now we're going to introduce the introduction to email. We're going to focus on the first part. So you are the sender. And the person who's receiving this is the recipient. So if you are using email for business or other formal purposes, your email address should look professional. The address should have all uh, or part of your name 
in so that people know it is legitimate. So the person you are sending the email to is called a recipient. Make sure that the recipient's name is spelled correctly when you type it. If the email address has a typo or no longer exists, you may get an email back from the post uh, master that looks like this. Delivery has failed um, to be sent to this person or could not be sent. Okay, so if you're writing an email more than one person, you can use the CC field, which is carbon copy, or BCC, which is blind carbon copy. It's useful if you don't want to share people's email addresses. The BCC recipient will not see the other recipient's names or addresses. So what's interesting is that I have not used BCC before, but I have used the carbon copy frequent times. And sorry about that. That's a warning that an hour now, an hour from now, I'll be working. So here, try to spot a problem with the recipient's email address in each example. Write the problem in the blank provided. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what's wrong with this. Only because um, I want to get straight to the point as to show what you're looking for. What's wrong with the first one? It's because there's two A's there. If they put David Jones at mailuni.com, um, what's wrong with this one is that David is spelled incorrectly. So if an email is shown and they have two, like often if you have an email that doesn't look professional, the simplest one is using your name and your last name and then a number at the end, which is fine. That's usually everyone's go-to or it can be, um, it can be the first and second or first or second name, etc. But everyone usually goes for the standard, your first name and your last name. Um, for my case, in my email, I didn't give my first name. I just used my my first and second, um, the first letters of my first and second name. And then I also provided my last name. And that's how my emails look. And that's acceptable because it looks professional. So here, the next one, teacher George at school.cim. What's wrong with this is that there's a typo in the last name. I mean, not the last name, in the article there. So it should be .com. Okay, number three, one, two, three, karate kicks .com. What's missing is the at sign because in emails, you always need an at sign. If it's not there, how would they be able to contact you because um, whatever at and then the basically what email are you using? So what I'm saying here is Yahoo, Google, um, AOL, etc. So any of those um, functions or whatever you want to call them, these emails are usually the ones that you need to incorporate. There's even like school emails, like um, my school, for example, does at CSU, at student.csub.edu, which is just an extension of um, a student email that the school provides for you. And also it protects you from using your personal email and people uh, contacting you with your personal email. They could just possibly result with spamming you, etc. So the best way they countered that was just providing a temporary school email. So each, um, so depending on which field, what you're looking at emails, it just changes to that. And you can tell easily by looking at um, this one here. So you want to pay attention to what this is because it can verify if it's a real email or, it's a, or if it's a spamming bot or if it's from an organization, etc. So this can definitely give you information about that. So introduction to emailing continued. So subject, with email, it is important to compose a subject that will make the recipient want to open the email. You don't need to write a full sentence. A good subject is short and easily searchable. In other words, if the recipient wants to find it later, he, can, he or she can write the word birthday and then it'll pop up. So task number two, write example subjects for the blanks provided. Um, this one can be very, very vague. So go ahead and write one, two, and three. So what is a subject that you can do for formal business? I will give you an example for me, just so you guys know what I'm talking, I'm expecting from here. So let's say I'm gonna say formal business. So I'm gonna say, um, uh, 
application. Uh, Anna? Yes? So I know a little bit about uh, the domains like uh, .com, .net, .gov, org, .net, and so on. Yeah. So the .chim, it doesn't exist. Yes. So the .chim. In the end, Oh yes, yeah, that's, that's what I was pointing out. Like this one, it doesn't work because at is missing. This is, it needs to be incorporated in the domain for the email here is No, 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 the ending, the Which... dot C-I-M, that doesn't exist. So it has to be also a valid domain. So it's google.com or google.us or google.ro or whatever. Right, so yes, like so I- So dot C-I-M doesn't exist, it's not a registered domain. Yes. Um, yes, I'm aware. I was pointing out on number two, it's misspelling. It has to be .com because CIM doesn't oh, exist. Okay. Yeah. So for task number two, um, formal business would be, for example, application for ESL teacher. That's what I would write. It's very straight to the point because it tells you basically what is your email going to be including. So application for ESL teacher. Um, the message for family, I think this is pretty rare. It's because, um, usually we don't really use emails anymore to contact our loved ones or relative, not unless they are very, let's say technology, technologically challenged. So like, for example, I would say my, my grandmother would, would be an example of that. And she's not very familiar with how to use technology. So the most she can do is understand how to open an email, write an email, etc. That's okay. And that's pretty rare because um, generally in our time, we can take the time to help our grandparents write in different um, social medias like Messenger or... Um, yeah, mainly like Messenger, I would say from Facebook. I feel like a lot of like... A lot of the older generation does do use uh, Messenger a lot, so I do take I get a lot of messages from my grandparents on Messenger actually. So if anything, Facebook is like their go-to. But if not, and you just refer to email, yes, yeah, to email, then it would just be here. So what I would say is what they set up there: just say happy birthday or greetings or I miss you. Here's a letter, etc. And then um, number three, informal invitation. Um, it can be anything. So this one, the topic doesn't matter. Just say whatever. And I would completely say informal invitation. That's a little bit awkward. Only for me personally, because I live in a time where I use different like um, social media applications where I can send invitations across anything like for example my birthday this last week it's been very hectic but um yeah for my birthday i had used um instagram instagram's uh, direct message just to let my cousins and my friends know that i'm having a party at my place etc and then that would be that so firestorm's question you know the love letters is that formal or informal Love letters are in, are very informal. So that could be counted for number two as a message to family because it is loved ones. Or it can be an informal invitation. But, it, but in go, those cases, obviously they're both informal. Because you're not trying to impress your partner as if you have a professional relationship with one another. You want to be intimate. So it, it, is, it has to be informal. Okay. So looking at Happy Smurfs answers for number one for um, formal business, logistics. Okay, logistics could work as your uh, response for your business. So I'm expecting your, your letter will be about logistics. Number two, grandparents anniversary. That's a good one. That could be used as a message. Maybe you're planning for your family to celebrate your grandparents' anniversary. Or you can send it straight to the grant to your grandparents and say happy anniversary, etc. And then three weekend party at jo at Johnny Farm for informal uh, invitation. That's perfect. Yeah. But then again, it's been a very long time since I've ever used email. Oh my god! Actually, no. I take it back. I remember I used to do the email spam mail when I no not spam mail. Um, the email link. It was like this little 
train game, my friends and I, back in middle school. Gosh, it was so long. I used email to communicate with my um, best friend back in the day. In from during my what was it fifth grade? I think I was like maybe ten, twelve. I used email to just talk to them, and it's very informal. Um, we still wrote signatures saying "oh," signed or "love," etc. Whatever. Man, I can't believe I blanked out from that. It's been a long time since I've ever written an informal paper. Yeah, but it's fun. So Firestorm, I could write you one. Love letters? Um, I prefer I prefer like appreciation letters than love letters, to be honest. So thank you though, Firestorm. Hello, welcome, Amin. So you guys basically got, got the gist of the answers here. So excellent work for everyone that's got um, the opportunity to write their answer. Okay, here. So greetings. Be sure to address um, or be sure to address the recipient properly in your greeting, also called a salutation. So double check that you have spelled the recipient's name correctly. Um, a period after Mr. Miss or Mrs. is not necessary, but it is possible to use a comma or colon after the salutation. Start body of your email on the next line. So as you can see, there's two examples here, the informal and the formal. Of course, the informal is hi Adam or hi guys, hello ladies, hi all, etc. Formal would be like dear, their name, Mr. Miss or Mrs. I don't, I have like a bad taste where they said you don't need to write the period after Mr. Miss, etc. That just leaves a bad note for me. I just think you need to at all times because the short, the short word for Mr. is Mr. with the period there. So to me, it's, I prefer you need to have this, right? It proves that you know the shortcuts properly. Yes, it does. And it, it, it looks more professional that way too. So I'm not sure why they, they said you don't need a period. It's not necessary. I don't, I disagree with that only because if you don't have the period there, it could come off as a spam email because a lot of spam emails, when you look at them, they purposely have grammatical issues. They, the paper of their um, or their emails look like they have a good format, but it comes down to the spelling and the grammar. If it doesn't make sense, it's a high, there's a high chance that it's a fake and they're trying to steal information off of you, etc. And the biggest giveaway is definitely the spelling, the grammar, and also um, the email when you look at it. So Firestorm's question is Mr. It's Mr. is for men, by the way. MR, Mr. If you put MS, it's Miss. This is to indicate that the woman is not married. If you put MRS, it's Mrs., meaning that the woman is married. So that's how it is. So it's just like um, me said I'm an S, so me Miss MS, that's me. So using a comma or colon after the salutation is fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, I guess, as you can tell from the informal, the comma is the most frequent uh, punctuation used when writing a letter to someone that you know or do not know. Um, I also want to point out how important it is you know the name of, who, like, let's say you're writing this as a business letter. Know who you're writing to. Research. It looks good. Because if you are very serious about getting this job, they want you to know who is the HR, um, who is the recruiter, who is the one handling all the job applications, etc. If you know who it is, or if you take the time to look into the company and see who is responding to them, and you address them by name, it looks really good. Because that goes to show you went the extra mile just to look good for this job, and that makes you stand out. However, there is one... Um, there is one situation where if you do not know who it is completely you can write to whom it, it may concern some people say this is unprofessional at times so like this one here people often use this one because they don't know who it is genuinely let's say they did their research but no one showed up so then it's appropriate for you to say to whom it may concern but if they have their names posted online and you didn't bother to put in the effort to find out who's talking to you or writing this letter to you it just makes you lose lose some of and their I, attention 
yeah. which one you said this one here and you're not sure in screen what do you mean oh i'm so sorry sorry about that um that's okay thanks for calling me there there uh, you go there you go. So sorry about that. I thought this whole time you guys were looking. Um, I forgot because I jumped channel. So here, um, I'll reiterate again. So notice in the informal side here, they also have the commas. If you look at here on the formal side, the arrow here I indicated to whom it may concern. So to whom it may concern is basically you're asking, um, like I said, you need to put in the research to know who you're writing this letter to. If they have it, presented online but if they don't have it then go ahead and write to whom it may concern there's a lot of opinions out there that's saying anyone who uses the phrase to whom it may concern looks very bad on them because it's very cliche um in addition if you opt for using to whom it may concern and you didn't bother to put in the work to figure out who is hiring you or who is emailing you back then it just shows bad taste because you it just shows you're being lazy. It shows that you're not very serious about this job, etc. So that's what it is. Um, I do have an email that I can share with you guys um, in the chat. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. One second. I don't see you have a different uh, material because I don't see the thing that. You oh no, it's not. Oh. It's not posted yet. So. No, no, no. The PDF file that you're sharing. I'm sorry. What do you mean by the PDF file? Or that's for you. Oh, that's where you can say teacher. Okay, my bad. Yeah, it's not for us. Yeah. Oh, I have a different screen open. Oh, okay. So sorry about that. I have like the answer yeah, like... key. Sorry about that. You guys are right. Um, it was. I was looking and say page eleven out of thirteen. I was looking at both of the files, yeah. and it's only maximum Jeez. eleven. And, like and there's a lot of things. Where's thirteen? Where's thirteen? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Take care. Firestorm. Yeah. Sorry about that, you guys. I have so many All like right. window and tabs open, so I'm just like so confused by them. <laughs> so in any case, yeah, it would be this one. Um, to whom it may concern, Mr. and Mrs. So thank you for catching me on there. Okay, now Everything we'll see, should right. be good now, hopefully. It was because earlier when I switched jump channels, that's probably screwed me over. <laughs> so let's see. That's if I okay. Can... That's why. That's why I said because you don't know if we you don't have the feedback from us. Mm hmm. So let me show you something else at this moment. So just give me one second to post here. And I also have to show it in the stream as well. Um, change window. You could share screen if you have multiples and just drag them uh, yeah. on the screen. It's all good, yeah. Let me go ahead and find it first. So give me one quick second. Because I think right now you're just sharing the app like the browser or something mm -hmm. or the page okay okay then i'm gonna share screen here okay all right we see a file a word file yeah okay so that's good for this one, um, as a note, let me just erase this little bit right in here on the side. This is a cover letter. And basically, oh my gosh, I don't know why it's acting like this. So this is basically a good example of a cover letter. And notice here, I do not know who I am talking to. I tried to look for their name. I just because the application I was looking for, they signed it as the team, nothing else. And I looked online, tried to check out their company, see who's on the staff team, see who I am communicating with. And because it was not available and there was no staff list available for this job, I just wrote to whom it may concern. So as you so can see- So not be the hiring team or- uh, the... 
you could if you want. But the thing is, I didn't know how to address them at the time. So I, I didn't say... It just said basically... It was like a very, very bland application on Indeed, which is where I'm looking for a lot of jobs there. Or where I was looking for jobs. I'm asking there. because I saw a lot of times. I, most of the time, actually, we don't know who to who we apply. Yeah, right, right. So that's I, where I don't it's... I it is, but for us, we have no idea, so... Exactly. So... I was thinking, like, in uh, the attention of uh, Human Resource Department or, I don't know, what expression to use there. Yeah, is you can... sending this letter to who? Yes, the letters to who. Yes, that is that problem that I'm trying to point out here. That you don't know who it is. You don't know if it's HR. You don't know if they're called team. You don't know, etc. You know? So that's okay. And that's what I'm saying. A lot of applications are so vague that they don't determine who it is. So it's your job to go on their website, find their staff list, and identify who it is, for example. But for me, when I look for it, I did. It doesn't tell me who it is. Even on the application, it doesn't say. Or some jobs I did look at says the blank team or the HR recruit, HR, etc. Submit this to HR. They would tell you. They would indicate specifically what to do. But for this application, they didn't even sign it as who. You know. So I could have written this as um, to the team, to the hiring team of uh, English native language. Um, instructor etc or the orange county lingual institute i could have wrote orange oc lingual lingual institute high um hr etc team etc but because i was being very careful and i felt a little bit nervous to address this with a name i decided to just write to whom it may concern and that was my approach to it a lot of people say though be careful of using to whom it may concern because it just looks it just looks cliche because of that and on top of it it just shows there's some percentage that could show that you're lazy as um as a worker as well so that's usually the the feeling people get off when you use that yeah for me it sounds more like to whoever reads this no matter who you are it's like yeah it's like whoever that's the impression uh, that to whom it may concern makes me have mm-hmm it makes you feel like they didn't really care. They're just putting it together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus uh, the company name or the, uh, you know, hum human resource department or whatever. Because mm -hmm. most of the company is going to be somebody that's going to hire you. So it's a big company is going to, or not small company is going to be the HR. If it's not, uh, it's going to be the owner of the business. Mm -hmm. It's a small one. Yeah, you can do that too. The next per closest person is the person who's hiring so you can leave it as that which is fine too so that's better than nothing all right introduction to email continue the body an email should be separated into paragraphs just like any piece of writing one or two paragraphs should be may be enough emails should not be too long use plain text without indentation it's better to keep formatting plain because it may not carry over to your recipient so introduce yourself if, if it's the first time you've contacted this person. Two, identify your reason for the email. Three, provide any special information. Identify any attachments. So I will show you an example of the one I have right now. Let's see. I should just drag it out. It would make my life easier. Okay. All right. So for me... Since I didn't even know who it was for my email, I just left it as good morning, and that's fine. You can greet them, that's it. So, as you can see, the first line that I used here, it is an introduction of myself. I am from California, USA. Came across your job listing on Dave's ESL Cafe, and I'm interested in the online ESL tutor position. So for this line here, specifically, I keep forgetting that I should be posting this as well on my here so let me double check the materials property I don't think I can share the picture oh the photo here okay cool so I'm showing it on my stream right now because I'm making sure everything's been covered 
so as I said here, I came across your job listing on Dave's ESL Cafe and I'm interested in the online ESL tutor position. Technically this line here could be the second paragraph. Um, I could have moved this one here, this top position, to the top here. But just so you guys know, I wrote this when um, maybe a couple months back. So technically, when I introduce myself in my new emails, I actually include all of this stuff at the beginning first. Then I write about this one to the second portion, which is why um, I have it moved around like this. But it doesn't really matter, I would say. Just as long as it makes sense, you what your purpose is, your purpose is stated. Um, if you want to really make it stand out, stick to you having this part here. I came across your job listing, etc. You can have this listed on your um, second paragraph or your first one. It's okay because as long as you're showing your purpose for the email, that's fine. And then of course I gave more information about myself just so I can sell myself to look as someone who's worthy of the position, quote unquote. And then the last um, paragraph here, or the second to last, I have attached my resume for your reference. So this is indicating that I have an attachment. And then here you always want to thank them for their time and consideration. And also right here, I look forward to hearing from you soon. This might come off uh, cliche because a lot of people do use this line for business letters, but this is usually what our go-to. Um, so always say this last part. Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to speak with you soon. To um, I look forward to our next meeting. I look forward to our interview next, etc. Um, any of that. But usually my go-to is just I look forward to hearing from you soon. Just so it shows that um, you're waiting for someone to respond to your email. Hopefully they do. And then your signature at the end here. We use a lot of words. We don't use the word sincerely. That's more of informal. We use our we use like best regards, warm regards, kind regards, um, best, comma, and then your last name. Yeah, your name and last name. So what I learned here from my elementary school and it's been consistent with me ever since from here you do two pair um two two skips of lines so press enter twice and then after you write your bar here press enter once and then go ahead and do that there's some people who have the ability to write a signature and then post it above their name and that's okay too but still you need to have a space between that and your name so it would be your signature here then your name right underneath it and then you still keep this space here just so it looks professional and that's what I've been used to seeing most of my life so I stick to the same thing okay cool. so a quick uh, question yes because we don't know the day because of the time difference and we don't know when they're gonna read it and all that uh, and because of the time difference maybe it's morning for us we didn't send it but when they look at it from their uh, time zone it may look uh, night time no it doesn't matter so, okay so it just it's a i mean what i was trying to say can we use other special like hello or something i don't know or you, it's too informal if you say hello. you can you can say greetings or hello and then you can write their name okay. there so what i what i meant when you said oh what if it's a different time zone that they open the email it, honestly it doesn't matter because when you write the email there's a time stamp as to when you sent it so if you write it as good morning from your time zone, there's a timestamp that shows on the email and it says sent at 824 a.m. That's why you said good morning. So that's why if they open it in the afternoon or evening, it doesn't matter because what you wrote, because the, it's if recorded they, at this time. If they are at the same time zone with you, if yeah. they're not, it will appear their, their time zone and it may be one in the night. Yeah. When so, you send it. So in that case, um, if you want to be very con if you want to be really sure that you know where this email is going to go to like let's say it's going to japan you need to look at the time zone difference between you two so when you send it and they receive it it'll be written in their time zone so their time or maybe you different. read the you or maybe you made the the email in the night time because that's when you have the free time and you send it so, so it doesn't yeah like i said it doesn't really matter in my opinion only because if they know you're from, for example, I said I'm from California, USA, and if I'm writing this to someone who's in Japan, they will adjust their times accordingly. So if they receive it in the evening, they just have to they have to just see the time zone difference between um, Japan versus California. 
And if they see the time zone is, um, if they adjust their time zone to mine, they'll realize, oh, she did write this in the morning in yeah, her I time zone. That. So what you try to say is, uh, it's safer to say hello or greetings instead of good morning, good night, good day. Yeah, but if you feel uncomfortable and you're really not sure what to say, then you could say, um, you can say, uh, let's see, greetings, whatever their name is. That's it. Or hello to the team, blah, blah, blah. Or you can write just the term, just put to the HR department of this company, colon, and then that's it. You just skip the greetings of morning, afternoon, evening. If you're very nervous and you don't want to do that, then that's your, that's your other alternative. Okay, because I know hi, it's uh, informal, so I was not sure about hello. That's why I asked. That's all good. Thanks. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch this to the other thing. Let's see. Okay. Okay, cool. So introducing back to that. Okay. So now we're back here. So the, the closing and si um, signing off. So like I said, you have a lot of these things here. You have informals where people say, cheers, see you, talk soon, later, cheers, comma, Lucy, etc. So these are very informal. I hear um, technically this could be cheers could also be used as a formal situation because I have received emails from individuals who might have you know might be from a british background so their sign off is usually cheers comma and then their names so this one here i would say it could possibly work for formal situations um in a very very rare case i would say um i wouldn't say cheers personally because i'm not british um, british english uses that more so yeah thank you for coming into class with amy um, Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. So here, closing remarks and signing off. Include a thank you message on the application, which I showed you earlier in my document that you want to say thank you for your time and concern, or thank you for making time for my for reading my email. Um, best one is thank you for your time and consideration. That's usually the go-to, and then you sign off um, by saying. Sincerely, respectfully, best, best regards, warm regards, thank you, sincerely, etc. So as you can see there, the, these are usually the same, the, the usual format. I always use warm regards and I also use kind regards. This is just to show that I am a very warm person. So it kind of gives off the tone a little bit by saying kind regards or warm regards. Um, best regards is more professional. I would say it's like, oh, I'm wishing you the best, etc. Um, there's some cases where I've seen people say thank you. So thank you, comma, their name here. Okay, so signature on every email. You can add your signature if you have one. So what will you include in your auto signature? Create a unique auto signature for yourself. You don't have to worry about that because obviously some emails. I know it's a format. I haven't had the chance to use it before though. You can preset your signature and you can also include your signature in the email so it sends automatically like that to people. I avoid it only because I use my email for so many things, not just for applications for jobs, but I also use it to contact students so and also to contact my school, etc. So it's a little bit of a hassle to keep deleting um, my professional like writing etc but it's really all up to you because you can also minimize what you do with an email so if you have an email that's specifically for jobs then just do that and stick to the preset writing then that's fine and then you have another email for everything else for example if it's like that that's even better for you okay so i noticed now it's already 303 p.m um and i have to get ready for my next course so we will be continuing this on page oops page six tomorrow I mean not tomorrow next week on Sunday with my new schedule so um, all my updates will be posted in the schedule section of our discord group and I think that's about it so thank you so much for coming in today right 
So we will be working on replying to an email later. So let's say they send you something, so just respond back to it. We'll look into that again on Sunday at 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Central Eastern Time Zone. And then at 3 to 4 p.m. I will do it. I will be hosting my video game uh, session so we can play games with everyone. Hopefully there'll be more people to show up at this time. And I think that'll be it. So I need to sign off and get ready for my next course. So thank you once again for you guys for coming in. If you have questions, you can write to me in the DM. You can write in the English questions in the global chat and just tag my name. And that's about it. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming in again. You're welcome. Okay. I'll also save this note and post it just because I have the, the writing on it.